I'd like to call the meeting of the Haywood County Board of Education to order for September 2019. This time I'd like to uh, ask Mr. Jimmy Rogers if he'd lead our board and our invocation this evening, immediately followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Board, please stand. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for the joyous and beautiful day you've given us. We want to thank you for the many blessings you've bestowed upon us. We want to thank you again, Lord, for the children of Haywood County, for Haywood County Schools, our staff, <coughs> everyone involved, and it is a community effort, Lord. It's a, it's a county that we're so happy to be a part of, and we thank you that you're a part of this county, and you're a part of our school system, and to help us grow, and help us learn, and mature, and give these children the best education we possibly can. Because they are our future. And we pray, Lord, that you help lead us in the decisions we make so that we can help the children of this county be better educated so that one day they will be leading leaders and they will be there to help us. And Lord, we thank you for all that you've given us. We give you the praise and the glory for it all. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Under announcements, I'd like to announce that Mr. Clark would not, was not able to come tonight due to a work obligation. He uh, talked to me earlier today and some things came up that he uh, needed to attend to at work, and so Mr. Clark was not able to be here tonight. Our next board meeting will be here at the Education Center on October the 14th at 7 o'clock. Fall bingo is coming up real quick on Saturday, September 21st. Please make an effort to be there. If not, just make a huge donation to the foundation and you'll be fine. So. <laughs> or just buy a bunch of tickets and don't show up. Be all right. no, just kidding. We'd like for you to be there to support it. That's more, more important. That's September 21st, 6 p.m. at the Canton Armory. Um, the 2019 District 8 meeting of the North Carolina School Board Association will be held Thursday. September 26 at Mountain View Intermediate School in Franklin, North Carolina. If you plan on being there to attend, please make sure you get with Miss King to register you. I think we already have done most of that. Uh, just as a reminder, the annual conference for the North Carolina School Board Association will be held in Greensboro, North Carolina again this year, uh, November 18th through the 20th. Are there any other announcements that need to become before the board? Okay, I feel like it, we do have some agenda adjustments. Okay, let's do them uh, between 13 and 14. We'll add building and grounds without objection. Is there any objection to the addition to the agenda? Okay, when we get there, don't let me go over past it, Mr. Dr. Rogers. Any other adjustments that need to be made? Okay. At this time, we entertain a motion that we approve the uh, board agenda as amended. So moved. Mr. Rogers has made the motion. Do I hear a second? Second. Second, Ms. Barrett. Any questions or discussion on the motion on the floor? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Next, we have Mr. Haney with us tonight for a special presentation. Good evening, Chairman Francis, board members, Dr. Noldy, Dr. Putnam, and Jill Barker. It is an honor for me to introduce the McClure Grant Award winner for educators. The McClure Grant allows our educator from Haywood County to go to a foreign country, and this year, they picked, or last year, they picked Joanna Tyne uh, to go to Mexico. 
Joanna has a short presentation. She wants to uh, share some of her experience uh, about going to Mexico. Thank you, Ms. Tyne. I had the opportunity um, this past summer to go to Mexico, feel like I'm still a girl. <laughs> um, and so I, I created a presentation, and this is more of a professional development presentation. It could be quite long, and I know that I only have about 35 minutes. So. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, so if you could uh, go to the next slide. Thank you. Um, so, of course, I want to begin with um, thanking for thanking um, the James G.K. McClure Fund for Education and Development of the Western North Carolina Community Foundation. Um, they are the ones who uh, allowed me to go to Mexico and experience this. Um, and it was very immersive and we got to go. It was a group of 42 teachers from across all of North Carolina. And we got to visit um, Mexico, Mexico City, city Irapuato and Guanajuato and in each city it was um, very immersive and we got to explore the culture as well as um, the education system and touristic part of the uh, Mexico system all in one and it was two two weeks very immersive so um, just to start out for where we went first we went to Mexico City first um, and like I said it was a great balance of both learning about culture and learning about the education system. So for example, we got to visit a private school um, and that you can see in the top right hand corner. Um, something, and this, this experience was very incredible because and at the end I show you that 2% of our um, kids in the Haywood County school system are from South America and we have a few in Waynesville Middle School where I work and so this experience was incredible because it allows you to connect with them in a completely different level that you I mean you can't even imagine if you haven't visited the place that they've actually come from um, so among all the touristic things that we saw in Mexico City another another place was the migrant center and that was um, one of the best experiences in the whole trip because you actually got to listen to the people that um, were there that were passing through that had hopes and dreams that are the families of the kids in our schools and I think I have a video on the next slide if you um, actually it's not on this one so it's later on it's um it's a video later on um, and I do have videos in this presentation but they are kind of long so I'm gonna skip over some of them but I'll tell you what they're about so the one on the left is um, a blessing that they actually do in every town um, and they bless you with this um, mist it's like smoking sage but it's not sage and it's very incredible and then the other one is a ritual where they um, call the rain gods by spinning off of a pole and these are all in towns um, and this is another picture of uh, pictures of Mexico City so on the bottom you can see more pictures of the schools there and what was uh, one of the biggest differences was that they were so incredibly colorful compared to our schools here everything was painted pink or red or light blue and it's very very different from what you see here um, and one of the other experiences that we had was um, a celebration of implementing a water system in a school. Now a lot of these kids come from places that have absolutely no access to water so this was a huge celebration for them. Um, and our sponsors, our grant sponsors, are actually the ones who made that possible so it was incredible to be there on some of their first days of actually being able to receive water in their school which would be one of the only places where the kids could get water because their town does not. Um, so actually here on the right is a migrant shelter story um, telling a session that we had and I um, did not film the individual's face because I didn't I didn't want um, you know that to be in the video just in case um, but if I don't know if we have sound but Each time they, they needed to develop uh, the, uh, deliver a product, they needed to pay this, this tax. But once he got kidnapped, 
Y como, como yo era el más grande, me quería noquear a mí primero y me quedaron And as he was the, 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 he was the strongest, you know, you need to uh, to defeat first the, the strongest, and he was. So he let it space. So this is just an example of um, some things that the families of our students, what they go through. Um, and the next video, unfortunately we won't have time for it, but it's a session of um, dancing that the students presented to us every single time, pretty much that we visited a school. They had some kind of presentation for us. And every single one of the dance classes that we saw in schools were um, traditional Mexican dances. So in every school they had a class where they could learn that, um, that was based heavily in Mexican tradition and Mex Mexican storytelling. Um, and then the next place that we visited was Irapuato, Mexico. Um, we all, we visited a ton of schools there um, and heritage sites. Um, and the school visit was another private school. Um, and you could all of these pictures are actually from that private school. Um, actually, there's two different private schools there. So the one on the top um, was. Uh, <coughs> was private but it was m more middle class and then there was a very lower class one that we visited um, and that was one of the schools that had a, a no, ac no access to water um, and I have a video I think on the next slide from that school yeah so this these are both videos from that school um, it was incredibly rural there was only about um, maybe 80, 80 students in that school total um, and they but the classes that they had were very, they had access, like um, on the video on the left, they were building this um, technology piece where they were training this little robot to maneuver places. Um, and then like I said, every single uh, school that we visited presented us with a traditional Mexico dance. And these are some more pictures from Mirapato. Um, so here are some more videos that we um, may not have time for, but uh, both, so during our time in Irapuato we got to spend some, some, some personal time with some local families to um, experience what they experience on a daily basis, and that was, um, some, some teachers were placed with actual families, um, I was placed uh, in a rotary club, so I got to experience a completely different side of Mexico, um, and it was, it was probably about 50 people of a huge Mexican family, and um, I think the biggest thing that I learned from that was they were all very welcoming, they all treated us like family. And then the last place we visited was Guanajuato, Mexico. Um, this was mostly just free time, um, and it was just a chance to experience Mexico by ourselves. Um, so we got to visit, it, visit the town, visit the um, shopping centers, which were all very open. Um, and it was just so, <laughs> mostly so incredibly colorful, which is so different from what you see when you come here. And very open, and um, everybody talks to each other. Um, so there was a lot of differences that I saw compared to what you see here when you move to Waynesville. Here's some more pictures. Um, and one of the things that I got to see while in Guanajuato was a local scarf maker. So that was just um, a normal job that you would see. Um, and when you stepped, I mean, the, the homes looked beautiful from the outside, but when you stepped on the inside, you got to see what was really going on behind the scenes. Um, and sometimes it made your heart stop. Um, but these people were extremely happy and they were, you know, they were glad to be doing what they do and this, he, this was his life and he was a local scarf maker. Um, and 
I was just glad to see where our kids' families are coming from. So like I said earlier, about 2% of um, children in our Haywood County school system are Hispanic. So it was, like I said, it was an incredible experience to be able to, I mean, you'll, you'll never be able to actually say, I know how you feel or I know where you're from. <laughs> I, I will never be able to say that. However, this experience made me able to at least understand a little bit more about where they're coming from and, and about where, about their culture, most of all. Um, so I feel like I can connect with them at least a little bit more on a, on a different level where I can, um, at least I've seen the place, you know, of where they're coming from. Um, and from everything that I've learned from this trip is the most important thing in our school system for these kids is um, our ELL programs. Um, and that would be what I would have taken from this most of all. Any questions? Any questions? Questions? We sure do appreciate you sharing your experience with us in this. Your energy is uh, contagious. <laughs> She's a uh, in representation of a guidance counselor in middle school, isn't she? Yes. Outstanding job. Can maybe we get those videos sent to the website where we can watch them? That'd be great. Next we have Miss uh, Jenny Wood. Chairman Francis, members of the board. Dr. Nolte, Dr. Putnam, Ms. Barker, if you'll come up here. Tonight, I'm so excited to be able to recognize our teacher assistants of the year. Without these, these people, um, our elementary schools and some of our middle and high schools wouldn't be able to get all the things that we get done. And I know that their teachers, their principals, and their students and parents thank them and um, are so proud of them for what they do every day. So tonight we're going to recognize one from every school and we want to congratulate and thank each of them. So from, and some of them can not be here today, but I'm gonna go ahead and recognize them anyway. From Bethel Elementary School, Karen Stamey. I don't think she could be tonight. Um, we're presenting them with a certificate and a thank you card and gift certificate. So from Clyde, Tori Hansen. If you'll come over here and then we'll take a picture. From Hazelwood, Ann Pope. I don't think she could come tonight. From Jonathan Valley, now move to Clyde. Jonathan Valley, uh, Chelsea Wright. From June Aluska, Brandy Adams. From Meadowbrook, Brittany Caldwell. And incidentally, it is her birthday, I think, today. So happy birthday. <laughs> From North Canton, Carol Harkins. She's here. From Riverbend, Denise Gibson. That's it. Thank you very much. If you guys will come up here, we'll get your picture.
We'll wait just a second while folks uh, exit the room. Now we have Ms. Barker presenting some information for us today, performance data. Chairman Francis, members of the board, hang on one second here. Jeff, what have you done to this? <laughs> um, Dr. Nolte, Dr. Putnam, and staff, just wanted to give you a brief update. Test scores were officially released last Wednesday. We're in a principal's meeting and the news dropped and Everybody started looking at test scores, so they're official, they're out. I will probably want to come back one more time, um, spend the weekend, and so the curriculum supervisors just digging around and looking at the data, but I did want to give you just a little bit of um, updates where we are so far. This is a press release that Dr. Nolte put together. If you'll scroll down to this chart, these are our schools with their current their performance composite for this year, whether they met or did not meet or exceeded in the case of Jonathan Valley growth this year, and their letter grade. We did have one of our schools went up in letter grade. Jonathan Valley went from a C to a B. Meadowbrook dropped from a B to a C, and Tuscola dropped from a B to a C. So those represent the changes for this year as far as letter grades. We do not have any D or F schools. We're still one of the few districts in the state. Hadn't had a chance to look and see how many, but we do not have any D or F schools. Any questions about letter grades that I could answer for you? The chart below, Ms. King, shows the percentage in the state of A's, B's, C's, D's, F's, and shows where Haywood County is in regards to that, all public schools and charter schools. So you can see we remain in good company with those as far as the state goes. And we are constantly looking. Right now, the big things we have looked at have been just comparisons with the state data. Just like when you're a principal at a school, you get scores and you, you, you celebrate a lot of things and there's things you look at and think, oh, how do we miss that one? How do we miss that kid? How do we miss this? And that's where we are right now. I do want to um, go over some highlights because there's some things that happened that honestly, I mean, almost made me cry. I was so happy. I'm really proud of our um, a lot of things and we did drop um, 2.6 points. We are still in the top 20% of districts We did take a drop in performance composite overall and you know, obviously you never want to drop and looking at that It's never one thing. So we're digging right now to see you know, we we know one of those things Right off the bat or I know um, especially being a high school principal our math one scores um, We did not get the math one scores of kids that were in eighth grade this year And so that it's going to make our math scores look lower in high school But that's every high school you think is in that same boat But we've got districts in the state that don't they don't let the kids take math one in eighth grade So right now we can't compare that data really well to see apples and oranges We will be able to next year because next year the kids that took math in eighth grade They'll take um, we'll get to count their math three Scores so that will look different next year um, So anyway, I don't want to get too much in the weeds. I'll answer your questions. So that is part of the drop Okay, and there are several other pieces to it, but on the whole, Haywood Early College is still tied for first place in overall performance composite above 95%. And I know you think, well, they're an early college. They should be. Absolutely. Go, go to that school and see that school. I am so proud of the progress that school continues to make. Um, that is a great school. It's an innovative school. And um, I can't say enough about Miss Fox and her staff. Blown away by them on a daily basis, and it shows. 
Pisgah High School ranked in the top 15% of high schools. That's about 355 traditional 9 through 12 high schools. They ranked in the top 15%. Riverbend Elementary, first in the Western Region in Title I schools and second in the state um, out of all Title I schools. So again, that's a huge amount of schools and their composite was 89.7%. So, you know, when you look at this, three schools that are just really in the top plus, go down and look at our elementary schools. Six of our elementary schools are in the top 20%. And when I showed Dr. Nolte, I didn't bring it, but I showed him the stack. Kim almost cried, but I showed, you know, the stack, and you see how many elementary schools, you know, 832. <clears throat> and I know we can tend to want to beat ourselves up. We got to celebrate, too. Um, that is a good place to be with six of our schools in the top 20%. I am very proud of them, and we'll continue to grow some of those schools, too. I think what really got me the most, having been at, at Pisgah and the work that Mr. Haney and our high schools have been into the ACT, the ACT to me, and I used to tell my kids, y'all heard this story, when I was an elementary principal and they get all worried about the EOG, I'd say, don't worry about the EOG, just do your best. Nobody will ever see these scores. You know, this is going to be okay. The only, score, the only test you'll ever take that matters is the ACT. When I got to Pisgah last year, they said, that was, this is that test you were talking about, isn't it, Ms. Parker? And I'm like, yes, it is, and it is important. I can't lie to you anymore about this. Um, <clears throat> but I'm telling you, 115 school districts, and we rank seventh on our ACT score. That's good. I mean, I've got a kid in ninth grade. I'm happy about that. You know, ACT is what gets you into school. I'm even more happy about the next one. We rank ninth out of 115 on the combined ACT work keys. Work keys, a job career readiness program. I would tell my kids, you get these. And I was looking today at a list of companies across the United States that take these credentials. They get job skill credentials for that. Um, and so we rank ninth out of 115 districts. And those are, those, are, those are skills that are getting our kids into college and getting them into jobs. So I am, is that not great, y'all? Yes. I just want to tell them publicly. I'm very, very proud of that. That has not come easy. That has been a lot of work and a lot of focus and a lot of dedication. And those efforts are continuing this year. So when you see them, brag about them. 417 traditional middle schools, Bethel Middle, ranked in the top 18%. Waynesville Middle is up and ranked in the top 28% of traditional middle schools in the state. All middle schools last year showed an increase in total math scores. And you can see where they were the year before, Bethel Middle, how much they, they for example, they were at 58.2%, they went to 63.5 for a 5.3% increase. Kent Middle, 51% to 53%, a 1.3% increase in Waynesville Middle, 55.9 to 62.4, a 6.5% increase in math scores. We worked on math last year. Sure do. I remember me telling you about that. So that shows, and we think it shows in high school too, we just can't. I'll show you something in a second. We just can't compare apples to apples yet. And to close this part out, um, of the 14 Western Region school systems, there are 14 school systems, we rank fourth in the region in grades three through eight in our overall performance composite. So there was a slip, a 2.6. I'm not gonna make excuses about that. I don't like, I never wanted to go back. So I, I see that and I wanna address that. But I also do not wanna not celebrate all the great things that are going on too. So please um, tell these people how proud you are in our schools and all of our teachers who continue to work hard. All right, next is Dr. Bill's famous gap analysis. Let her, <laughs> he loves this gap analysis. This is the first thing he wants is this gap analysis. So um, we had this done the first night, and I, I took Teresa, Teresa a coffee mug I'd found because she stayed until the wee hours and we got this put together. So I, she's not here tonight, but I just want to say thank you to her. The white cells represent where we are below the state average and the green cells are where we are above the state average. So I'll let you look at that for a second. Let me point out a few things. Let me interject something while you're looking at that. We, we always have the, I still serve as a public information person, so we always have uh, media come and interview us and talk to us about test scores. I remind them that we're one of the few districts, maybe the only district, 
that I'm aware of, but we're one of the few districts who've given them this information every year on every school and every subject. Uh, that's because we want this information so we can focus on the gaps. <clears throat> so it's a very open analysis that we share every year publicly. Thank you. Very good. So, um, yeah, just a couple of things I wanted to point out. This was a renorming year for math. And I remember being at Bethel and they would renorm certain things and we would expect it to go down some, there's not an excuse compared to the state because everybody got renormed. So that's what Dr. Bill said. We like to put that out there and you know talk to our people about how we continue to grow them and what support they need. But you do expect some some drop. And just in the overall composites across the state of the 115 district, you've seen a, some drops. Um, if you look at Pisgah and Tuscola. Um, do you see the percent career and college ready where they're both white there? They didn't get the fours and fives on that math one again that they're usually get, you know, so because those are the scores they got from that. So that's why you see that. And across the state, I'm pretty sure that would, it's still lower. Um, but that could attribute for some of that. So where we are right now, I, I just want to say, I can't say enough for Kim Shipman. Um, you know, Jeff Haney this weekend, they went home, you know, they have drilled it down to, you know, just individual teachers. We had planned on meeting and principals just to say, hey, what can we do to help? You know, I was a new teacher too, you know, for five years. I didn't know what I was really, you know, I had to write down every single day and need that support and help. So we're just really trying to, there are cur the curriculum supervisors and try to let them support them in any way we can. I've met with several principals already. Um, and just wanted that help with that data and have made different changes to get people maybe in a more comfortable position where they, you know, something maybe they felt stronger about teaching or, you know, and just any kind of curricular support. So I've had a lot of really productive meetings. We will be meeting with all schools next week, and I will take Kim with me to the elementary schools, Mr. Haney with me to the secondary schools, and we're going to talk to them about their school improvement goals for this year and, and formulate some plans. Any questions you have for me? Be glad to answer any of them. Any questions? There's plenty to celebrate. There's plenty to celebrate and plenty of work to do. Yes. So there's plenty of work to do too. But I do want to celebrate these great accomplishments and we will continue to grow. And, you know, I'm competitive. So I, I want our kids to have the best education they can have. And, and I feel like they are getting that. And I just want to applaud the teachers out there. It's a hard job. Being a principal is a tough job. And so um, we'll continue to support them and grow them and help them be the best they can be. Everybody, you know, people get up in the morning, they want to do the best job they can do. And we just got to help them to try to do that and continue to grow them. I appreciate y'all's support. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ms. King, has anyone signed up to address the board in open session? Board members, you've had an opportunity to uh, look at the August 5th closing regular session minutes. I'll make a motion we approve. Mr. Kirkpatrick's made a motion. I hear a second. Second. Say, Mr. Francis, any questions or comments, discussion on the motion on the floor? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Dr. Nolte. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, this is a resolution that we shared during the work session. As you know, we presented our a comprehensive facility plan for educational support services uh, back to the Board of Commissioners in January and then again just a few weeks ago. At that meeting, uh, Chairman Inslee graciously suggested that we started meeting together uh, to talk about all aspects of uh, those facility changes, including the building that we currently occupy as well as all of the other buildings. At our second meeting of the group, um, with uh, Dr. Putnam, um, Ms. Gardner, and myself and the, and the folks who work for the county, we just felt like we needed to formalize the process. So we really start crunching numbers or looking at buildings or pieces of property. We would have a formal process. We expect uh, that the commissioners 
uh, or hope that the commissioners would, would follow suit and that was the plan at least from the people we were meeting with. So at this time we ask you to consider uh, this resolution. Resolution Haywood County Schools Board of Education whereas Haywood County Schools Board of Education is committed to quality education for all students and whereas the Haywood County Schools Board of Education is committed to maintaining efficient and effective educational support services facilities to support a quality education for all students. In my time, did I run out of time? <laughs> the use of that, that timer goes off three, three minutes. Sorry, over. Over, Doctor. Sorry Doctor. about that. <laughs> Couldn't resist. You know, we got to have a good sense of humor in education. Right. Whereas long-term infrastructure is needed to support educational support services in order to provide a quality education for all students. And whereas the current central office must be vacated by December 31st, 2020. And whereas other support services facilities are old. Uh, not designed for support service purposes, unconsolidated and in, in, ineffectively linked, and whereas consolidated and efficiently designed educational support services facilities will reduce maintenance and other annual operational cost, and whereas the funding of improved educational support services will require the joint work and commitment from the Haywood County Board of Education and the Haywood County uh, Commissioners and whereas the Haywood County Schools Board of Education places a high value on academic achievement, financial accountability, operational transparency for educating students at the level they deserve and whereas the Haywood County Board of Education must be a good steward of public funding and must be cognizant of debt capacity. Now therefore, we hereby direct Superintendent Dr. Bill Nolte and Associate Superintendent Dr. Trevor Putnam to enter into formal planning with representatives from Haywood County Board of Commissioners for an educational support services facility with a focus on long-term, efficient, effective and consolidated operations in the following areas teacher training finance human resources curriculum instruction exceptional children federal programs information technology or a board meeting place child nutrition central administration and other support services and further we hereby respectfully request that the Haywood County Board of Commissioners appoint representatives to enter into formal joint planning with the individuals designed, excuse me, designated by the Haywood County Board of Education for the purposes of the foregoing. You can see Mr. Smathers helped write this also. So we ask you to consider that resolution uh, to formalize our planning process. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, I think this is a great thing, and at this time I would like to make a motion that we present this resolution as presented. Okay, now here a second. A second. Okay, we have a motion from Mr. Rogers and a second from Ms. Barrett. Whereas we've had a motion on the floor mm -hmm. about this resolution. Whereas. <laughs> Duly okay. made a motion by Mr. Rogers and duly seconded by Ms. Barrett. Seriously, this is a much needed facility and my comments are that this is something that we strongly need to support and ask our commissioners for their help. Uh, I've been on this board many, many years and it's time now to do something about it. And it has been time. And so, uh, any other questions, comments, discussion on the motion on the floor? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, board. Ms. King, I'll sign the copy for you and we'll get it to the county commissioners, please. Thank you. All right. Since Mr. Clark's not here, he said that he was going to put Mr. Hanson in charge of the financial reports. And the finance committee met earlier and reviewed all the financial reports and I make a motion that we approve the financial monthly financial reports. Okay, I have a motion from Mr. Henson. I hear a second. I'll second. Say uh, Mr. Francis, any questions or discussion on the motion on the floor? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Anything else tonight? That's it.
All right. Great job on the finance committee. Thank you, sir. Next we have uh, Dr. Rogers on the uh, building and grounds addition on the agenda. I have three motions to present tonight. First, the motion to utilize the facility use process in lieu of a biannual contract for the use of the old Haywood Elementary Gym by Haywood County Parks and Recs uh, yearly at a cost of $2,200. Okay, we have a motion from Dr. Rogers. Do I hear a second? Second. Second, Mr. Barnett. Any questions or discussion on the motion on the floor? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Next, uh, Mr. Chairman, we have a, also a motion coming from Building the Grounds to declare the following property surplus. Fixed asset number 9067, which is a 1991 Ford F-250 um, that is being, has been utilized in the past by Pis, uh, Pisgah's or a custodial truck. Also, uh, we have the same fixed asset, 9095, same type vehicle uh, that was used for a custodial truck at Tuscola. And in addition, we have another fixed asset we want to surplus, 15683, which is 2001 Dodge Ram 2500, which was the old painter's van. All those items will be recommended for surplus. Okay, we have a motion from Dr. Rogers. Do I hear a second? Second. So, Mr. Rogers, any questions or discussion on the motion on the floor? Are the high schools replacing those vehicles? They've, They've already replaced those vehicles. Maintenance truck down and uh, replaced them. These were the, the oldest. Okay. Worst shape. Any other comments or questions? If not, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Mr. Chairman, the final uh, motions in reference to the renovations at Pisgah High School where we're creating two intensive intervention, intervention classrooms. The motion is to approve $17,500 to Mark Lusk's architecture for architectural services. I second that motion. We have a motion from Dr. Rogers, second of Mr. Kirkpatrick. Any questions or comments or discussion on the motion on the floor? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Dr. Rogers, for the on work the Building and Grounds Committee is doing. Thank you. Earlier this evening we had a lot going on prior to the meeting and we did not get finished with our discussions in closed session concerning personnel so we're going to adjourn from open session or I guess recess, excuse me, recess from open session and uh, go back into closed session which we had recessed from. So we'll be back shortly we are going into recess. Meeting is now back in order. It's come to the chairman's attention that we have some guests with us tonight, and I was going to ask them if they would like to introduce themselves to the board. That would be great. Absolutely. I'll go first. Can we just introduce Dolph? Yes, okay. Dolph Rogers, Chief Financial Officer of Pisgah High School. My name is Kirsten Bange, and I'm actually doing my student teaching at North Kent Elementary currently. We are all inclusive education majors at Western, so we have a dual licensure coming our way next May. Rebecca Lovedall is doing her internship in Franklin at Kurtukache. Jessica Ray is doing her internship at Mountain View uh, Discovery, no, not Discovery, in Bryson City. And Katie is doing her internship at Clyde Elementary. Well, thank you very much for joining us tonight. You're thank welcome. you. Last on our agenda is personnel with Dr. Nolte. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, staff and guests, uh, uh, I want to present at this time the personnel that we discussed in our closed session um, meetings, or I guess it was one meeting over uh, two periods. Uh, for your information, there are uh, 17 separations from employment 
13 employment employee status changes, uh, nine leave of absence. Okay. For your approval, uh, there are 52 names listed. We're going to pull number 11 and vote on the other 51 first. So I, um, you want to do that separately before yeah, we, we do the other areas? Tom, I'm entertaining a motion. We approve the 51 as presented. Ms. Barrett's made a motion to hear second. Second. So, Mr. Henson, any questions or discussion on the motion on the floor? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> motion carries unanimously. And then number 11, Mr. Chairman? Okay, at this time, the Chairman's been advised that Mr. Henson has a conflict of interest, so he's asked to be recused from the vote on this number 11, and we grant that. So, Mr. Henson, you don't need to vote on this one, okay? At this time, we entertain a motion to approve number 11 as presented. So moved. Mr. Rogers made the motion. I hear second. Say Ms. by Ms. Barrett. Any questions or discussion on the motion on the floor? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. How many we got here tonight? Six. Six. Six, with six four, and one recusal. We'll present the rest as we normally do in a block unless you so. want to pull others. Also for your approval, uh, employee status changes 51, a leave of absence 1, contracted services 28, substitutes 15, em, uh, employee coach 6, and volunteer coaching services 6. Make a motion we approve personnel as presented. Okay, Mr. Kirkpatrick's made the motion. Second. Say, Mr. Rogers. Any questions or discussion on the motion on the floor? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Nolte. There being no further business to come before the Haywood County Board of Education, meeting adjourned.